Welcome to another IB Environmental Systems and Societies video. In this second video on topic 4.2, Water Access, Use, and Security, we're going to focus on the strategies that societies use to increase their water supply in the face of growing demand and scarcity. We'll examine the benefits and limitations of those strategies from environmental, economic, and social perspectives, and each method represents different technological approaches ecological impacts, and that demonstrates how water management decisions involve complex trade-offs. We'll also explore the concept of water scarcity, distinguishing between physical and economic scarcity to understand how limited water availability affects human societies differently across regions. So let's get into it. Let's explore some strategies for increasing water supply. Each approach has different applications, costs, and environmental impacts. Constructing dams and reservoirs creates reliable water storage, but it disrupts river ecosystems. Rainwater catchment systems offer decentralized collection, but they have limited capacity. Desalination produces fresh water from seawater, but it requires significant energy resources. Enhancing natural wetlands provides ecosystem services alongside water storage. Regions typically employ several of these complementary strategies based on their geography, their climate, and their economic resources. Dams and reservoirs represent major water infrastructure investments with significant benefits and drawbacks. Benefits include a reliable water storage for agriculture and drinking, renewable hydroelectric power generation, flood control, and recreational opportunities on the lakes that form. However, dams disrupt river ecosystems by blocking fish migration routes, they displace human communities, and they change the downstream environment. Dams require high initial construction costs and ongoing maintenance. They accumulate sediment over time, and they do pose catastrophic failure risks. Despite these concerns, large dam projects continue around the world as demand for water and energy grow. Rainwater catchment systems offer a low-tech, decentralized approach to water collection. These systems capture rainfall from roofs or other surfaces and store it for later use. Their benefits include reduced stormwater runoff, low operational cost after they've been installed, and minimal environmental disruption. They also enhance local water management. However, they do have some limitations. They have limited storage capacity, they do require regular maintenance, and their scalability is limited for large urban areas. They're also fairly climate dependent. These systems work particularly well in areas with consistent rainfall patterns, and they can supplement but not necessarily replace municipal water supplies. Desalination offers a climate independent water supply option, particularly valuable for coastal regions that experience freshwater scarcity. Plants like this one remove salt from seawater, and that creates reliable drinking water source regardless of rainfall patterns. Major benefits include drought resistance and enhanced coastal water security. However, there are some pretty significant drawbacks. Extremely high energy consumption, marine ecosystem damage from the brine discharge, that's the really concentrated salt water that results from the desalination process. They have high costs and they're substantial carbon footprints unless they're powered by renewable energy. As the technology improves and the costs come down, desalination is becoming more and more viable for water-stressed coastal regions. Enhancing natural wetlands provides multiple ecosystem services alongside water management benefits. Consider the impact of restoring natural wetlands and connect it back to what we did in topic three. Wetlands act as natural water filtration systems. They create habitat for biodiversity, they provide effective flood protection, and they offer cost-effective water management solutions. However, they do have some limitations. Those limitations include land area, they include seasonal variability in the amount of water that's available, they have unpredictable restoration outcomes, and there are some challenges in managing invasive species. Unlike engineered infrastructure, wetlands integrate water management with ecosystem health, and that provides water purification, groundwater recharge, and habitat preservation at the same time. Many regions are now restoring degraded wetlands to improve water security. Water scarcity refers to limited water availability for human societies. This limitation can result from actual physical shortages or inadequate infrastructure. That's a distinction we'll explore in subsequent slides. Water scarcity affects over 2 billion people around the world, and it's increasing due to climate change, population growth, and an increased consumption on a per capita basis. Understanding water scarcity is important for developing 
appropriate mitigation strategies, as the causes and the potential solutions differ pretty significantly between regions experiencing physical scarcity versus those that are experiencing economic scarcity. That's it for the second part of ESS Topic 4.2, Water Access, Use, and Security. In our next video, we'll examine the practical solutions that can help address water scarcity through conservation and mitigation strategies. Until then, happy learning.